Hello everyone, the Instant Camera Guy here, and welcome to what will possibly be a new segment for the channel, which I am hereby dubbing, and I cannot believe I never thought of this amazing pun before, Pimp My Roid, uh, which is basically a segment where I'm either going to be uh, through the recommendation of a client, or through someone saying, here is a camera, please go nuts, uh, I will effectively be pimping it out, customizing it, really going as crazy and pushing it as far as I can take it uh, to make something unique. And so what I have here is a Polaroid 1600. Uh, this one belongs to my friend Ashley, who uh, has been on this channel before in some way, shape or form. Uh, in the video that I did on the SX70R, uh, she actually helped me out by doing a bunch of sample photos for me uh, because I figured I wanted to get the camera in the hands of another photographer, not just myself, and get their raw opinion. So she did that and her photos are featured at the end. Uh, and she's also helped me with uh, setting up studio strobes that I could test flash apertures and that kind of stuff. So uh, I figured why not repay the favor by doing something crazy to her 1600. Uh, now I actually purchased this after a conversation that we had where we were talking about very underrated models. And I think the 1600 certainly has to be one of them. Uh, this is one of the more professional versions of the 1600. The 1600 like most Polaroid cameras produced after sort of 1975, the naming schemes on these things were complete garbage. Uh, but I believe this is a 1600 Pro, which basically means the lens focuses a little bit closer. I believe there's some kind of autofocus mechanism built into these, although details are pretty light and pretty scarce. Uh, I believe it's got extra features such as a self timer and a red eye reduction. And there is a more professional model than this. What is happening to my light here? Hello? Why is that so dark? Okay, that was strange. Um, there is a more professional model than this, which has a tripod socket and a hand grip on the side. So yeah, it seems that by this, by the 2000s, uh, Polaroid's uh, production methods uh, they were certainly reaching for uh, different features that they could add and subtract from cameras, but um, where, what I'm, when, where I'm trying to go with this, these take really great photos and they are a really compact design. They are among the most slim Polaroid cameras that you can purchase. Um, they are not quite as slim as an SX70, but they are a smaller footprint, so they probably take up about the same kind of volume but this obviously has a built-in flash. Uh, and yeah, if you're after a Polaroid 600 camera that is super portable, I think these fit the bill and no one seems to talk about them. Anyway, we are, as my segment suggests, gonna go pretty nuts with this thing uh, and customize it. Now, one of the first things that I wanna do, and I'm hoping that it will actually work, um, is convert it to take iType film. Now, usually when I do an iType conversion, I try to use a four AAA battery holder. Now, why do I like using AAA as well? They're everywhere. You can buy them at your local gas station if you run out of batteries while you're shooting in the field. Um, more importantly, the 1.5 volt cells, by the time you add four of them, equals six volts, and that's what these cameras need to run. But the downside to using a AAA battery back like this is, although it fits really well on a standard 600, such as this one, which I just iType converted yesterday. There's ample room on that sloped surface and really it doesn't change the footprint of the camera. Uh, as you can see, with the 1600, there's not really anywhere that you can put a battery adapter that doesn't look, I guess, kind of ugly. <laughs> like four AAAs, wherever you mount it, it's gonna work, it's just gonna look terrible. So the plan for this one is to use two AAAs, but instead of using alkaline cells, I'm gonna use 3.7 volt lithium cells in the shape of a AAA to go into this battery holder. 
wires are going to go from inside here into a buck converter which I'm hoping that I can fit somewhere under this sloped surface and then from the buck converter it's going to take the 7.4 volt that we're going to get from the two AAA size lithium batteries down convert it into 6 volt and then power the camera so I'm going to rip out all the original battery terminals and the benefit with doing it this way so there's pros and cons. The big pro is I'm going to be able to attach the battery holder here, which does not add much bulk to the camera at all. And where this little wrist strap mount is, that's a darker color, it kind of seamlessly like blends in. So it's going to be much more compact. The other advantage to using these lithium cells is by purchasing them and getting yourself a charger, this is now going to become a rechargeable battery option with the added advantage that you can swap battery cells in the field, which I think is going to be really, really cool. So the first step, obviously I've got some of the battery holders and I've got some of the parts that we need, but the first step is going to be that we need to dismantle the camera. Now, once it's dismantled, it's going to give me access to two things. Um, first being, uh, hold that thought for a second, guys. I'm just going to find my screwdriver. All right, we're back, it was right in front of me. Um, first thing that it's gonna do when I, when I take all the body panels off, it's gonna give me the opportunity to decorate them because that is one of the things that I'll be doing to this camera. Um, the intent here, once I've got all the body panels off and to the side, is to really clean everything as good as I possibly can and then sticker bomb the camera. Um, sticker bombing is a, I guess an aesthetic, um, it has some crossover between skate culture, uh, JDM car modifying culture, um, and it's certainly an aesthetic. And I've ordered a bunch of various different stickers that I plan on cutting up and basically pasting all over this thing until it looks like a complete harlequin. Uh, just to give it a really unique look because one of the things that I said to Ashley when I picked up this camera I said if I'm gonna modify it why don't we go totally crazy on this thing and she agreed and basically said I have unbridled creativity <laughs> and to go nuts so that is precisely what we're gonna do uh, now from <sighs> memory in the last video these things can be very difficult to take apart there's like a clip at the top here there we go so that's gone up now this yet yeah, that should not have any more screws and this should be yeah so there should just be a little clip at the back here which I'm, yep there we go hopeful that I can take forwards and here we go so the first thing is it does appear that there is going to be ample room for me to put a buck converter. Um, one thing that I'm going to do, I'm just going to completely detach the ribbon cable uh, from the top housing there. Uh, it seems that on this version, because there's more traces, they went for one of these like flex cables. The last one that I took apart actually had wires, which was interesting to see. Um, but yeah, inside here, there is ample room for a buck converter. Um, I've got a few places in which I could put it. I could put it up here next to the solenoid. I can mount it on top of the main logic chip on the PCB. I can even put it down the bottom below the viewfinder here. So there's lots of different options. And I think what I'm gonna do is once I've got the whole thing taken apart, I'm just gonna sort of suss out and see the best location that it's gonna fit. And effectively any panel that is silver, I plan on attaching the PVC sticker decals to. So like I said, we're gonna clean everything with alcohol to make sure the surface has no impurities. And then I will be attaching stickers in order to decorate the camera in the sticker bomb style. Uh, so next thing I'm gonna do is take the door off. Now, this time around, this process is proving to be much quicker. Uh, I say as I struggle with the door here. There we go. Just like an SX-70, you kind of got to do this weird little rotation and off it comes. Uh, I think I'm going to collapse that down a little bit just to keep everything protected. And I'm just going to continue to remove screws. 
So it's the, uh, the smaller screws go in the front. And there should be another small screw, yep, right here, just at the back, just at the rear here. And then I believe everything else is clipped. There we go. So three small screws hold this top body panel on. And this should come out now. I think I might have to, yeah, lift that up. Uh, hang on. The other one, <laughs> the other camera that I was doing for my client, it all kind of just fell apart. This one's proving a little more tricky. Uh, do I have to? No, I shouldn't have to take the house off. Oh, there we go. Great. Now there's three more screws and we'll be able to have every single body panel completely off. Now, here along this side is where all the wires run. This is very likely where I will be mounting the battery holder. So if I remove the clip, I've removed all the switch and some of the terminals, uh, but I believe if I mount it here, uh, which I'll, or here, um, no, I'll have to mount it here. So I'm gonna be mounting it here and I'll very likely do that with either double-sided body molding tape or I'll use some kind of screws. That's gonna allow me to drill a hole to pass the two wires through and then I'm just gonna have to tuck them up and over here. And as I said, there's ample room for me to put one of my mini buck converters. Um, at the time that I'm recording this part of the video, I don't possess those buck converters yet. I'm waiting for them to arrive in the mail and the wait is slowly killing me, guys. I cannot tell you just how much I want them to arrive so that I can get to work on this thing. Uh, Cause projects like this are very, very exciting. Um, also, Ashley barely knows anything about what I have planned for this in terms of the aesthetic style. Now, if the vinyl decals that I've ordered don't work properly um, or they're not like appropriate, I will, I don't know, I might paint this thing or, or I'll do something crazy with it, that's for sure. All right. So that's yeah, two sides and then the last thing, actually what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this little hand uh, wrist strap off. Uh, just grab a pick so I can undo it. Because this wrist strap is getting caught <laughs> and getting in my way. I do like it, but I want it off the camera for the time being so I can work without it flopping around. There we go. And then the last panel I have to get to is, yeah, just under the spring for like the, um, what's the word that I'm looking for here? The pick arm. And it's kind of in a very awkward spot. So I'm gonna remove yet another one of the larger screws. And then that should allow me to At least slide this up and out of the way like that and then I can get my screwdriver in there with ease there we go and now the whole lot should hey there we go should totally lift out and that gives us access to the little button which presses on that steel rail at the back and that's what facilitates the folding mechanism. Uh, but yeah, this part of the camera, I, I really don't intend on touching other than I will tap into the green and the yellow wires here, uh, green and yellow, green and orange wires, uh, which go to the positive and the negative. Uh, I believe, yeah, orange here is positive and then the green is the negative. I'll confirm that obviously. Uh, but that should be how it works because it's just a regular 600. Um, actually, let's just let's just make sure of that, and I'll, I'll actually write it on the camera because uh, I don't want to say something on this video and get it wrong. But I do believe, yeah. So positive is on the right here, and that's orange. So let's just write here. So 
plus, put an O for orange, and green, and then that's negative. Easy peasy. So yeah, these terminals will very likely be completely removed. Uh, one of the other things I'll be removing is this little uh, metallic tongue, which again, just prevents you from inserting the wrong types of film. So we will need to remove that in order to easily insert eye type. Uh, and yeah, so this is now one base panel that I can go clean up, take off to the side, stick a bomb the heck out of. Uh, we have one chassis of the camera, which really, as far as I know, just doesn't need anything done to it. Um, I believe actually has tested this. I've run an empty pack of film through it and can confirm that it does indeed, uh, it does indeed at least seem to function. Uh, I don't know how much has truly been tested. Uh, but I think Ashley did run some film through it. Obviously I'll test it at the end. So yeah, I don't think much more needs to be done to the chassis, 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 chassis. I became uh, possessed by the spirit of a Frenchman there for a second. Um, yeah, nothing really needs doing to the chassis other than to buck convert it. So I'm gonna put all of these parts into a box and wait for my parts to arrive. And we'll cut back to me doing the conversion. Oh, very interesting, just quickly, and I hope I can get my silly camera to focus here. But on the PCB, as I discovered with the last one of these that I worked on, there are a bunch of pads here for switches that are completely unpopulated. There are also some jumpers, uh, which you can basically bridge with solder. And I'm assuming what those do is power various components. It really does seem that Polaroid used like one type of PCB for each of these cameras and basically just disabled or enabled features as they saw fit. Um, what these switches do, I have no idea. It's S1A, S1B, and these seem like the kind of pads on the PCB that one of those like rubber dome buttons like would, would press uh, a little carbon contact onto uh, in order to bridge them. I have no idea what they do and I haven't been able to find a service manual for them. But it could be that like one of the things that these cameras don't have is like over or under exposure. And I wonder if like that's what some of these switches are. I just have absolutely no idea. It, it doesn't say anywhere what they could possibly do. What are these jumpers for? There's also little variable resistors. Come on camera, focus. Work with me here, there we go. There's little variable resistors here and here as well. What do they do? It just says VRN, VRF. What does the N and F mean? I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I really wanna see if I can track down a service manual for one of these things because I think it would be very, very handy to have. Anyway, just a slight digression. Well, this certainly must be one of the most colorful cameras that I've ever made. Um, sticker bombing turns out not quite a fast process. Uh, this took me forever yesterday, lining up the stickers uh, in the appropriate positions. Um, and I think that it doesn't help that I chose what may be the curviest Polaroid ever produced, um, <laughs> which made it very difficult to orient some of the stickers. But this thing is gonna look really rad when it's reassembled. So that is what I wanted to do now. I took the liberty of adding the two AAA battery holder. It's held in place with a combination of two screws and double-sided tape. And there is a pass through into the chassis where I'm gonna be able to route the wires uh, that are gonna power the buck converter and then from the buck converter into the camera. The chassis of the camera I have off to the side. I've taken the liberty of removing the two battery terminals and just desoldering the wires. Remembering that orange is positive, green is negative. And what I wanna do is just reassemble the camera uh, so that everything is intact and so that I can begin wiring it up because I don't need the camera to be apart. I only need that top panel off to wire in that buck converter. It's actually gonna be better if everything is put together. So I've got the screws still in the chassis that hold it in place. And it should just be a matter of lining 
the screw holes up and we can start to, yeah, just sort of reassemble this thing. Um, the screws are not easy to see. There's a lot of wires in the way and other detritus. Uh, so this part is a little bit fiddly. I've, I took a few dummy runs at just seeing if I could, I guess, get any other t techniques to make this easier. And it's just, it's just not a friendly camera to put back together. They're pretty easy to take apart, but the putting back together is uh, a different story. Um, just, just because of where the screw holes are, like, it's not super impossible or anything like that. It's, it's not the most difficult Polaroid to work on, that's for sure. Um, but it's just hard to see. That's, that's really the only problem is the screw holes are hard to actually see. You kind of just got to feel it. Uh, and hope that you're getting everything in the right holes. Ugh. See what I mean? Like you think it's lined up, but it's not. Come on. In you get. Yeah, okay, there you go. You'll kind of feel the screw grip down once you're in the right position. And yep, that one as well. Brilliant. Now what I can do, uh, I think I can put that little side panel on that goes over here. Uh, it's sort of a combination. You gotta clip it from the bottom, but then this part's gotta come up and over like so, brilliant. Uh, and then this should need one of these slightly longer screws, I believe. Yeah, like that. Yeah, you would think that the longer screws are for holding the body panels on, but they're not there for holding the side panels. Which is, it seems counterintuitive in your mind because the, the body panels are so much thicker. Uh, and then this panel goes on through a clip at the back. Yep, which is gonna hold that in place. And then one of the shorter screws. There's not a lot of difference in the, in the length of these screws, so it is a little bit confusing. Ugh, come on, get out of there. But yeah, I just wanna reassemble this to the point where I can appreciate a bit of the prettiness. Uh, because technically, yeah, all the rest of the, the wires and stuff, I should just be able to route with the rest of these body panels on that. There should be no reason that I can't. there and then that last body panel on I'm gonna I'm gonna leave the top panel off and just put on the door and then we can at least appreciate the majority of the pretty stickers once I get the door on should be in place yeah, there we go. Brilliant. All right, looking good. Um, I did end up discovering what the extra pads were for on the PCB. You guys will remember in the last segment, I noted that there were some pads. Um, it appears to be some kind of secondary uh, shutter button system. There are pads that are like inside here, which I can only assume are for factory testing. S1A and S1B stand for shutter button one and shutter button, well, shutter button one A and then one B. So uh, what that does is the shutter button on one of these is a, is a two way, not a two way, um, it's a two contact button. You, you can half press it and then you can full press it. The half press will wake the camera up once it goes into standby, the full press will take a photo. So that means two switches need to be engaged. So if you actually use some kind of metal contact and short both of them, the camera will take a photo. And then the little pad to the top turns on and off the red eye reduction. So it's the same as the button on the top panel. Um, why they exist, I can only assume is for factory testing uh, because otherwise the camera works completely like normal. Um, anyway, that's about it. I now have to wait for my buck converters to come in stock and uh, then we can finish this thing. All right, guys, 
this it's actually the same day as when I was filming the last segment uh, because in the mail arrived this little guy. Well, I actually got several of them, but uh, this is a mini buck converter. Basically what it does is it converts a certain voltage in DC to a lower voltage DC. So for example, if you had a 12 volt power supply, but you only needed six volt, you could use one of these to reduce the voltage. It outputs a maximum of three amps uh, at its peak. On average, it outputs about 1.8 amps, which should be ample for driving this camera. The only thing that I may have to install on one of these is a smoothing capacitor on the end of the camera, uh, the end of the voltage that goes to the camera. The reason being that I believe this has some kind of autofocus mechanism inside, and it may work better with the voltage smoothed, sl smoothed slightly, uh, so I may have to add a capacitor afterwards, but hell, for the purpose of this video, I am going to uh, wire up one of these bucks and then test this thing out. So uh, what I've got is another battery holder here, and then my lithium batteries arrived. Uh, these look like AAAs, but they are not. They are AAA shaped lithium cells. So a regular AAA battery is about 1.5 volts. Uh, this is 3.7, so mm, over double the voltage which is why we're gonna need that buck converter. Um, and basically what I'm gonna do here is just test with my multimeter. I'm gonna wire up to the buck first uh, as it sits here separate because there's a little variable resistor and I'm gonna need to make sure that we measure the output um, so that it's actually outputting the correct uh, six volts that we need. So uh, if I turn the multimeter on to voltage, this should read about 7.4, maybe up to 8.4, just depending on how charged these batteries are. Um, I have not charged them yet. The eBay seller said that these were fresh. So yeah, 7.75, so way more volts than we need to run this camera. If I was to hook this straight up, uh, odds are this thing would blow up and it would be rendered absolutely inoperable. So I'm gonna switch that off. And what I'm gonna do is just very, uh, very carefully on the input side of things, I'm just gonna quickly solder. Uh, I mean, I guess I could do this with the batteries in the camera, but I'd rather not. Um, I just wanna solder first and see exactly uh, how much tweaking this trim pot is gonna require. Uh, so I'm gonna get my handy blue tack, which holds everything in position. Now on the back of a buck converter has the output and input. We obviously need to solder onto the input side of things. So we've got input positive and input negative. So this is the voltage that we're sending in. Now these buck converters, by the way, I can just about see myself in the comments having people say, where did you get them from? Um, just go on eBay and just search for buck converters. If these are the kind of things that you think would be useful for you, literally just go on eBay, type mini buck converter and you can buy them. You can probably get them even cheaper if you ordered them in bulk from places like uh, AliExpress. Um, but uh, I only need a few and they're pretty cheap anyway. So input, input, output. So let's see what this is measuring on the output. So 7.2 volts. So what we should be able to do now is with a little screwdriver, I think, tweak this little trim pot. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So can I, oops, the wrong way around. Not that it really matters. It's the same voltage. It was just reading negative. Can I? <laughs> do this at the same time. Oh, that's going up. Hmm. Is anything happening at all? been a while since I played with one of these. Okay, yeah, so the, the trim pot is pretty sensitive. Five volts. 5.7. And 6.1. 
let's just reduce that down a little bit. 6.01, that is absolutely within spec. So, this buck converter is now ready to be installed into the camera. Now, I've already found a little spot for it. Uh, the other thing that I found, which because it's clear, I think I've misplaced, I actually had some heat shrink, uh, which is a clear color. <laughs> and I was gonna insulate the buck converter with that clear heat shrink. Um, because it is see-through, <laughs> Oh no, here it is. I was gonna say, because it's see-through, I can't see it, it's invisible. Um, it is right here. I was gonna say, let me cut while I go and find the thing. Um, I'm just gonna cut the appropriate amount. Uh, so yeah, so while I was off camera, I obviously poked the battery wires through. Um, and so basically I want those wires to be sort of quite short actually, um, cause they don't have to travel very far at all. So, we are, I'm literally just gonna snip them here and then with my handy pliers here, just strip back some of the excess. And so what I will be doing hopefully is, if I can strip the wire back, there we go. Great. Let's tin the ends of that. And that should just go onto the buck converter. Obviously I've got a desolder this battery holder now. So I'll just do that and then clean up the pads. But yeah, this was, I just wanted to bench test this before I stick it in the camera. You know, much better to be safe than sorry. Uh, in the future, now that I know everything works, I'll probably just do this in the camera, but for the sakes of this video and education, showing you guys how it works, I just wanted to do it externally before I mounted it inside. Obviously, I'll be double checking voltage again before I insert it. So I'm just cleaning up all the solder that I got into the little pads. Tack out. Great. All right. Just got a little bit more solder in the positive to clear, and then we can start wiring this thing up. Great. Okay. Just gonna grab a cloth and my alcohol and just clean all the flux off left behind by the solder, great. So, uh, input negative is that top one. So, I'm just gonna wire that one in first. Like so. Now there should be ample room, yeah, for me to basically just take this over to the side. And I'm pretty much just gonna be sticking it, once it's all insulated, I'm gonna be sticking it around here, right in the middle of where the PCB is, because there's so much room inside here uh, that that will be a perfect mounting position for it. So I'm just gonna stick in the positive side. like so. Great. And uh, yeah, basically about here is where I want it to be mounted. Now these wires are also a little bit long, so that's the positive. So positive has to go here. Uh, I'm just gonna trim these till they're about the same length. The positive is actually a pretty decent length. The negative is not. I'll tin those as well. 
And then I'll put some batteries in this, and before I hook it all up, uh, I will just check and make sure that that is still outputting the correct voltage, which it should be. And then I'll insulate the whole thing. So uh, let me stick some batteries into the back of the camera now. All right. Now sliding the switch down is going to turn these batteries on. Sliding the switch to the top is going to turn them off. Yep, 6.04, so that is completely fine. All right, now all I have to do uh, is get my insulation on there first. If I can, poke it down. I will come and uh, shrink it when the new uh, battery pins are on. Now, I'll just double check. The PCB says orange is positive, and that kind of makes sense. Orange is near red. Uh, and then that means that this one can go in here, the negative. I'm just going to turn the batteries off for a second. So I'm just soldering this one in place. Great. And all I got to do now is hook up the positive. And so what's going to happen now when I turn the, the little battery compartment on, what should happen is 7.4 volts is going to go in and that is going to get converted by the buck converter down to uh, the 6 volts that we need or about 6.04 which is more than in spec. Um, a Polaroid can easily handle up to about 6.4 volts, which is like really fresh alkaline batteries. Uh, and then that voltage will drop considerably as those alkaline batteries get used. So 6.04 is absolutely within spec. I could even go 6.1 volt and be fine. So now I just want to shrink the heat shrink a little bit. Um, I'm just doing this really to provide some extra protection so that nothing shorts on the PCB. Great. And with that uh, layer of heat shrink that's there, um, basically what I can do is, if I ever needed to adjust that output, I can actually just break through the layer of heat shrink and then adjust that little trim pot at my leisure. Um, but yeah, basically it, it just sort of needs to mount there now. Um, and then that'll, that'll easily just sit there. It's, it's all tucked away. I'll, I will get some double-sided body molding tape just to hold it down and in place right about there. But this should all work once I flick that, flick that switch. Now, I'm learning about how the film counter mechanisms work on a 1-600. Um, I think they work a little bit differently uh, to how a regular 600 works. Um, and obviously, powering the camera before it's designed to have power may confuse it, but I'm just going to slide in this old pack of film. There's no battery terminals inside the camera, so even though this is like SX70 film, uh, an SX70 film pack, it won't power the camera at all. Uh, let's see what happens when I hit the switch. I may need to... Hello? Oh, it could be because the ribbon cable isn't plugged in, so... Uh, but nothing's blown up yet, which is a good sign. Uh, yep, yeah, positive, positive, great. Let me just plug in the ribbon cable. Just to make sure, because powering this thing externally like this, I have done it before with um, AAA batteries. And it did cause some strange behavior. Oh, wow. Yeah, that works. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so that's working nicely now. Um, yeah, the only odd thing that I can't figure out is the film eject. I think if you keep the camera like constantly powered, um, I think what you need to do is insert the pack of film, maybe then power it, then close the door. Yeah, okay. 
Um, because that film eject is on a timer, how it receives power um, dictates how the dark slide eject works. Like, I think if it stays constantly powered, it won't eject the dark slide at all. Yeah, it's not going to do anything. Um, but also, if I turn the batteries off, stick the film in there and close the door, I don't think it'll eject the dark slide. Yeah, it won't. It'll just go straight into shooting mode. Um, so if you want it to eject the dark slide like normal, you have to insert the pack of film, then turn it on, then close the door. Which is a really weird quirk, but um, that's just the way that these cameras were designed. Um, they're not designed to receive power without there being a pack of film in there. Um, so worst case scenario is you're going to insert a pack of film and the counter's going to start at 10 instead of starting at... Uh, well, the dark slide eject is going to be the 10th photo and the counter's going to start at 9, but look, honestly, the modern packs of film have 8 photos per pack, not 10, so this is not really an issue. This is me splitting hairs. Um, but yeah, I'm going to now go and box this up and show you guys the finished results. Well, I'm happy to say, guys, not only does this thing look absolutely rad, but it performs rad too. I've also figured out the film counter. Uh, it is electronic. It is not mechanical like a standard Polaroid 600. And basically, if you power the thing on, well, if you turn the batteries off and then power them on, uh, the counter will always show 10. Um, in order to actually activate the counter properly, one has to insert the film, then turn the batteries on, then close it, and it's going to run like normal. Um, if you don't do that order, the camera will also work just fine. Um, but, I mean, the counter is not very reliable on these things anyway, because it's 10 versus actually 8 shots in a pack, as you guys know. Um, so if we turn it back on, and then do that all over again, yeah, see, if you don't time closing the door, it'll just start at 10. And so you, that would have been a dark slide, so your actual shot starts at 9. So instead of subtracting 2 from the total, you subtract 1. Uh, either way, the way that the iType conversion runs on this is a lot nicer than the clamshell 600s, which have the, the pop-up flash. Um, this one, if you do manage to muck up the order, or if you take out the pack of film and close the door, nothing uh, detrimental happens to the camera. Whereas on the pop-up flash models, if you power the camera with no film in there, it'll constantly run the motor. On this one, that doesn't happen, which is really nice. Um, as you guys heard, the film eject on this is insanely powerful. Like... <laughs> It feels violent. That's how strong this thing ejects. Um, I took a few sample photos. They all turned out really, really well. It nailed close-up, long-distance photo of a car, and the photo of my dog Luna sitting there like some kind of a praying mantis on her bed. And uh, yeah, just works really, really well. Um, it is only the professional models of the 1600 that have a little light dark slider there that allows you to over or under expose depending on the exposure compensation that you wish to use. So it would have been nice had this been a professional version, but honestly, I believe this camera is going to work for about 90% of the scenarios you put it through. And I mean, just what a looker. It's so cool. Um, the most important thing is I now have a battery option for these that I can give to clients. So this is now a service that I'll be offering if you would like your own AAA lithium with buck converter battery system done to your 1600, then absolutely I am happy to help and provide that as a service. Um, I'm not sure if I'll be providing sticker bombing as a service because boy was this time consuming. Um, it was so difficult to get all the stickers to basically uh, align nicely over the curves. Way more effort went into this than what it looks. Like, this was literally three hours of me placing stickers, I swear. Like, that's not even an exaggeration. It took so long to get right and to cut things. Um, but certainly, uh, if you want AAAs, uh, the, the AAA lithiums done to this, 
then by all means be my guest. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much where I'm gonna leave this video on this absolutely pimped out Polaroid 1600. Um, I'm gonna finish with a little bit of a gallery and just play you guys out with some kind of a music and uh, yeah, pretty much take it from there. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.